Hi, this is the Professional Amateur Hour coming to you with another review. This week, I checked out Gala Walkers. And this 2012 film was directed by Andrew Goth and stars Wesley Snipes, Kevin Hoarth, and Tanit Phoenix, among others, of course. The story of this movie is about Wesley Snipes' character, and he's this badass cowboy going around getting revenge for something that happened to his wife. So he has to track down this gang of six or eight guys and eliminate them one by one. Along the way though, they all happen to be supernatural as well. So what's up with that? Well, for that, you gotta watch the movie and find out. All right, so let's discuss this movie. Well, with this one, I gotta say Wesley Snipes' character kind of really made it for this one. I loved him in Blade, and this is essentially if Blade was a cowboy, and it works perfectly well that way. He's just as badass. He doesn't have a sword or anything, but you don't expect cowboys to have swords. So he's just got his six-piece there, you know, shooting these guys at impossible ranges and exploding heads and all this different type of stuff. So Wesley Snipes' character is just so cool. He's just, like, dripping with coolness, and it comes through the screen, certainly. So his character, I gotta say was the most enjoyable thing about this whole movie. And another thing that makes this movie super cool is all of the scenery as well. It's all in the desert and with the contrast between the characters' outfits and, you know, just the desert behind them, it's really striking. It's really kind of super cool. There's even ones where it's this, like just a tree and a man in the distance in this desert. And it's just so cool to look at. So the whole movie is just so stylish and, and slick that way that you can't help but keep on watching it. Furthermore, the story, though basic, is interesting, especially with kind of that supernatural element and how that works into it all, because you kind of discover that as it goes along. And as you can tell, I'm not giving away much of what is actually going on. And so all of that certainly does work. It is kind of a discovery of how it all kind of fits together in all the pieces. And like the supernatural qualities of it is a motivating factor for a lot of the guys. And then how their kind of supernaturalness works is really interesting as well. And so all of it just kind of fits together to make a very interesting story. Also with this one, the villains are a unique cast of characters. And they're all different enough that you're really interested into seeing what's going on with them. They have like this priest character and his mouth is sewn shut. And you're like, what's going on with that? The main villain has this, well, I won't give it away. I'll let you discover it. Then all of his henchmen all have kind of these unique kind of quirks to them as well. And so it certainly does work as like an ensemble, I would say, to just to get you into it, to see, oh, what's this guy all about? What's that guy all about? And it certainly does work that way. And that brings me to what doesn't work with this one. Well, ultimately, it's a B-movie, and so nothing about it is going to be perfect. And certainly there are kind of like gaping holes in some kind of plot points that the more I think about it, the more I just like can't piece together what actually happened in that scene. It starts off like pretty early, like these guys are captured or whatever, and then the bad guy just walks in, and it seems like he's not with the bad guys that were already on screen. and it, he like, you know, blows them away. And it's just like, wait, where's this guy coming from? And then like, the more you think about it, like he comes out of the bad guy's own tent and you're like, well, then it should be with him. It really doesn't make sense to sometimes. And so that is just one thing that certainly bothered me. Um, it's one of the minor ones though. Most of it I think is consistent within its world. And then the rules of the supernatural qualities are fairly consistent at least, <laughs> so that's good. It's just that a few things here or there don't make as much sense as you would like. Other than that, you know, I have seen quite a few reviews of this one, and with this one, a lot of people were saying they don't really kind of have any real motivating factors for anyone. With Wesley Snipes' character, you know, he's just a badass Blade type of character. You're just expected to go along with him, not really kind of knowing anything about him. He is trying to get revenge for his wife, but they don't build up the wife at all. And so it doesn't really feel like he has any connection to her, really. Besides being told that she was his wife, there's nothing really into that. And that is not really an issue with me. Like, I love that Blade-esque character, so I'm just going along with it. I would also say with this one, because, you know, he's so cool, he's so badass, all of the fights 
are over way too quickly. He has perfect aim, even at a thousand yards away. And so he's just blowing people away, blowing their heads up, of course. But everything is over really, really kind of quickly that way. I would have loved to see much more kind of this gunfight aspect. But it's all just over so quickly that you blink and you miss it. And so there is a lot of kind of, not character building, but story building and stuff like that in there. And not enough action. Other than that, there's a few odd like editing choices here or there. Like they speed up for a second or two and you're just like, why would you do that? It doesn't really make sense. So certainly it's not a perfect movie. Ultimately, I think it's fun, but to let you know, there's a lot of people out there who thought it was not as good as I did. As for a recommendation, well, if you did enjoy the character of Blade and things like that, you can certainly turn this one on. It's just him as a cowboy if you're into what's it called? Weird West? This is certainly one of those Weird West movies that I think a lot of people will enjoy. It's just kind of interesting overall, and especially with the visuals, very cool to watch. I did also watch it on Tubi, so if you're looking for it, go over there and press play. As for rating, well, I'm going to give it an average score of 5. I think on IMDb it has like 3.8, and even then most of the like actual written reviews are lower than that. But for me, as a B-movie lover, I can certainly say it's a 5. And with that being said, I think that's all I wanted to say. So like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.